so it is now the next morning the grid charger was turned on all night long and this morning at about seven o'clock i checked the uh, settings on the bms here and could see that all cells were charged to 3.4 volts except six seven and eight they were over voltage i mean not over voltage 3.65 but over the 3.4 volts of all the other cells so what I did now, I changed the balance settings of the BMS to uh, 3.41 volts, which is, if you remember from yesterday, well, it's yesterday for me. Um, this is our cutoff voltage. The charger charges to 54.6, which is 3.41 volts. So I changed the balancing settings to 3.41 now, and you can see already it charges a little bit higher. It took from seven o'clock, that's like three and a half hour, yeah, three and a half hours now and they are still not at 3.1 except six and eight so um, because we are charging with very low current into the battery it will take a long time to actually see these cells rising to 3.41 um what i so um as you have may seen on my channel we had some discussions about the um, absorption bulk and float settings in charge controllers with these lithium iron phosphate batteries and i would like to test something in regards to that we have said it makes actually sense to set the float voltage the same as the absorption voltage so the charge controller charges until this target voltage then turns off if the battery gets slightly depleted the charge controller kicks in again and supplies energy again to the load and the uh, battery so some people said that's not good because there's always a little bit of current going into the battery and even if you set your battery to uh, lower voltage so uh, target voltage say 3.4 volts only or 3.35 volts and you've got this little trickle charging current going into the battery all the time eventually if you just wait long enough the battery will still charge to uh, 90 percent it keeps charging with this little trickle charge and keeps charging 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 until 90 percent so it saturates at this high state of charge then and this is probably not what you want so it was suggested that i charge to a 3.5 or even 3.55 volts but without absorption so absorption time zero we reach the target voltage of 3.5 volts per cell and then turn off the charge controller and then turn it back on at a lower voltage so probably at 3.35 or so so this ensures there's no current actually going into the battery and still the charge controller will kick in once the battery goes a little bit down and this is in the steep part this is in the very steep part of the curve anyway here so not looking only at the voltage but at the whole capacity at the char or charge and discharge curves you won't lose much of capacity we will measure this we will actually measure how much capacity it is from 3.5 down to 3.35 volts when the float voltage kicks in again or actually it changes back to bulk then so how much ampere hours are you actually losing by by doing that so this will be the test for today and i already have changed the charge controller settings to uh, 56 volts which is where's my other cheat sheet here uh, 56 volts 3.5 and the volt and the float voltage is 53.6 this looks like a very big gap but apparently well we know it is not much capacity in between these two voltages because we're already in this very steep area of the curve so absorption 3.5 float 3.35 and the balance is on 3.5 so that's what i'm going to try now i turned off the charging here with the mppt last night because i just wanted to have the grid charger connected and trickle charge the battery and see if they are all and see if they are all balancing correctly and they do apart from six seven and eight so we are going to change the balance turn on voltage to a 3.5 and writing this back into the BMS. Confirmation beep. 
and we also will turn on the charger again the solar charger and see what's happening there we still man we've got we've got the bluest sky today ever and the battery is full look at this it is amazing pure sunshine here no clouds at all ah and we could just hear the fan turning off of the charger it has a green light still connected but the voltage of the battery has now risen because the mppt takes over and um, well the um, the grid charger thinks the battery is full and turns off itself so this is another good feature of this e-bike charger all right so let's have a look what's happening with our batteries now we should see a steep rise in voltages in all the cells i just hope that these three are not going too far up well, we are charging with 1.5 amps only at the moment. There's still some shading. So we missed the morning gap. And now these branches are in the way a little bit. We probably can see from here, yeah, that they are shading on both strings of the solar panels now. That's why we get only 1.8 amps. But the shades should go away in a few minutes. Uh, and also you can see the absorption time is zero and the tail current is also turned off. So as soon as we reach the 56 volts, it goes into float mode straight away. So we are now at 55.8 volts and should shut down charging at 56. Uh, so far only 6, 7 and 8 have reached 3.5. All the other cells are still a little bit under, but still very close. So I think over time we will balance these three cells so they will be in line with all the other ones i'm not driving the battery too far down anymore as i did before because then these three cells will be the lowest one as well and trigger the low voltage disconnect and again this is all testing what i'm doing here right now this is not advice or something what you should adapt this is all what i'm testing at the moment i just uh, make these videos about it to let you know about the results and what i could find so uh, hopefully eventually i find the optimal settings for this setup here and cell number six goes to 3.57 almost it gets the balancing you can see when the balancing kicks in actually the voltage goes down so because we are at this super steep area of the curve now it doesn't take much current to actually lower the voltage and once we have reached 56 now which is right now so we should see the 56 okay this is bms smart shunt and solar charge controller so there we go absorption we just hit it and then we should see the balancing happening for six seven and eight only until they reach the 3.5 volts bang float there we go zero amps and we've got even a minus here now this is the standby of the inverter now so we are not charging the battery at all anymore there's no current going in and now it is waiting until 53.6 and i want to see we've got zero amps at the moment here i want to see how much ampere hours we actually use until 53.6 uh, volts until the battery actually drops down to that i think this is less than one ampere hour just a guess So we have now reached the float voltage of 53.6 volts. BMS says the same. And we can see all the cells are now nice and tight together. 9 millivolt deviation only at this point of charge here. And also we can see the charge controller has actually kicked in again a little bit. It charges with 82 watts. It is now trying to keep the float voltage as stable as possible. And this is another relict from the old lead acid batteries here where you had the float voltage set to 13.6, 13.7 volts and the charge controller just keeps the battery at this voltage. And this is exactly the behavior we can see now here with the MPPT as well for the lithium batteries. It basically supplies as much energy as you are using at the moment for your load. So it doesn't really charge the battery. You can see there's only 200 milliamps going into the battery at the moment to keep the charge at 53.6 volts. But the rest of the amps are going into my inverter or into your load straight away. 
So it's now trying to stabilize the set float voltage. And we have used exactly one ampere hour only from the 56 volt when we stopped the charging down to 53.6 volts, which is our floating voltage now. And considering we've got a 280 ampere hour battery, one ampere hour used is not much. I probably have to agree that we should not set the float voltage the same as the absorption voltage because it will not turn off the current into the battery and you potentially trickle charge the battery all the time and charge it up to 90-95% without you knowing it. So I will keep testing these settings now here. Probably I even go a little bit further down to only 3.32 volts per cell and see how this works. But at the moment it looks like this is working just fine. Okay, so just turning on the garage light here, put some more load, put some more load on this system and see what we have now. Minus six from the battery and plus 1.4 from the charge controller. As long as it can maintain the 53.6 volts, it's all fine. There will be no change. Maybe this load is not enough. Okay, okay, let's turn on the irrigation pump. And even now, the full power for the irrigation pump is coming from the solar directly. We are still in float. Only less than one amps coming from the battery. The rest is being supplied by the charge controller. So this works perfectly. This is exactly what you want. You want to keep the battery charged at a good state of charge. And if you have some load, the charge controller kicks in again. Well, if you have sun and takes over the load. Perfect. It's even charging the battery now. So the pump has turned off and it's now recharging the battery just a little bit to maintain the 53.6 volts and then we can see the current is tapering off again here keeping the float voltage as designed perfect yeah guys so far this video from yesterday and today i hope you enjoyed it we have now successfully top balanced the battery using our e-bike charger and the function of the bms Everything works fine with the battery apart from cell 6, 7 and 8, but this was kind of expected. And we also have changed the settings in our MPPT solar charge controller now to have a gap in between the absorption and float voltage. Which I think now, after reading a lot of stuff on the internet, it maybe is the better setting for the battery. And it also gives you a more consistent charge. But we will see, I will test this setting for a couple of weeks and I'm sure we will change them again and test something else then because there's still so much to test on this battery. Amazing. Well, as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Stay charged, stay safe, and we shall see us again in the next video coming very soon. Thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye bye. <music>